How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Before we start, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to everyone who subscribed and all the messages I get on Instagram really motivate me to keep posting for you guys and I really really appreciate the love and support I've been getting since I started the channel. Anyway, I know why you guys are here, let's jump into it. So today we're looking at the differences between the GAMSAT exam and the UCAT exam. These are both exams you sit to get into medical school. We're going to be running through number one, the similarities and differences between the tests. Next, I want to run through which test I think is more difficult. And number three, which I think would be the most important one for you guys, is which one I think you guys should be sitting. Just for reference, I have thoroughly researched both tests. I have set the GAM set a few times and I've also I thoroughly researched the UCAT exam, which previously used to be the UMAT exam, which I have sat myself as well. Let's look at some of the differences between the GAMSAT and the UCAT. The number one difference is you sit the UCAT to get into an undergraduate medical school. So universities in Australia, like the University of New South Wales, University of Western Sydney, and a few others where you have a five-year degree to become a doctor and then go work as one in a hospital. Now, the GAMSAT exam, on the other hand, is one you see to get into medical school as a postgraduate degree. So once you've already got a bachelor's degree, like a bachelor's in biomedicine, a bachelor in science, and now you want to move into medical school, so that's when you see the GAMSAT to get into a doctor of medicine course, which is a postgrad course, as the one I'm doing currently. In terms of the GAMSAT, so the GAMSAT has three sections. You've got section one, which is a comprehension section. You've got section two, which is a written essay section. And you've got section three, which is like a logic science-based section. If you look at the UCAT exam, instead of three sections like we had for the GAMSAT, the UCAT exam actually has five different sections. So you've got verbal reasoning, decision-making, quantitative reasoning, abstract reasoning, and situational judgment subtest. Um, in terms of overlap, there is not a lot of overlap between these, these sections, between the two exams. When I say overlap, for example, can you study for, say, section 2 of the GAMSAT and then at the same time you're kind of preparing for a different section in the UCAT? Not really, because these two tests are actually quite different. GAMSAT, you can think about like a more comprehensive, holistic kind of exam, whereas the UCAT is kind of more fast-paced, can you think quickly, can you put the answer down before everyone else kind of tests. So they're quite different. If I had to connect some of the sections of the GAMSAT to the UCAT, for example, section one of the GAMSAT has to do with comprehension, and then um, verbal reasoning and some of decision making in the UCAT also has to do with comprehension. So you've got this really broad level overlap, but there's no like, you know, when you, when you, when you go into the micro part of these questions, there's not much overlap. The GAMSAT questions you have actually require a lot of thinking, a lot of complex deduction to reach to an answer. Whereas for the UCAT, the questions itself aren't that hard. It's just, you just gotta do it in such little time. Oftentimes, you know, most sections is under a minute. You have to put the answer down for the UCAT. I think the shortest is for abstract reasoning where you have to put an answer down in about 13 seconds. So that just goes to show how much different the tests are. UCAT, you've got around 13 to say 50 seconds a question. Whereas for the GAMP side, you've broadly got a minute and a half. And obviously, if you spend less time on some questions, that can go up to like two minutes and even three minutes per question. So there's not a lot of overlap between preparations for the GAMSAT and preparations for the UCAT. Even if we consider section two and section three, section two of the GAMSAT is obviously a written part of the test and the UCAT is a completely computer-based multiple choice exam. So there's really zero overlap between section two and the UCAT. Section three, although it's a logic-based test, UCAT isn't as logic based as you might think. Although section 3 of the GAMSAT is a logic based section, the most parallels you can draw between the GAMSAT and the UCAT for section 3 is probably quantitative reasoning. You know, for section 3 of the GAMSAT, you do need a bit of mental math to work through the, some of the questions. But again, that's kind of a stretch. Broadly, there's no big overlap between the GAMSAT and the UCAT. And one of the big differences is the GAMSAT traditionally is a paper-based test. So you go, and, go into a test center, you've got your pen and your paper, and then you answer the exam for five hours. Whereas the UCAT is quite different. You still go into a test center, but it is a computer-based test. So it's fully multi-choice. You just click through the different sections and the test is only two hours. So the GAMSAT was around five hours. Usually it ah, goes up to six or seven hours, really, with all the lining up. Whereas the UCAT is a much more streamlined, it's only two hours and it's kind of spread out all over the month instead of that one day where everyone goes and sits the GAMSAT. Those were some of the big differences between the GAMSAT and the UCAT. 
similarities. Are there any similarities between the Gamten and the UCAT? And the answer is some. Both tests are logical aptitude based tests. So when I say that for both tests you don't really need a lot of knowledge. You don't have to spend months on months learning a bunch of theory to be able to excel in either of these tests. Both of these tests are designed to test your aptitude so you should really be working on skills you know outside of what we learn at, at our schools at our universities this is really testing you know how quick can you think and how logically can you think under a given period of time the big question that we come to next is which test is actually easier right because if the ultimate goal is to become a doctor it really doesn't matter how you get there we would want to look for which way is the easiest the amount of time, amount of effort, and we'll get you into medical school. Now, when people ask me which one's easier, the GAMSAT or the UCAT, I really think of archetypes. If you're the type of person that loves reading, loves writing, and you know has love for the sciences and has a sound level of logic, the GAMSAT's probably for you. Versus the UCAT requires someone who knows how to think really quickly. And when I say quickly, it's super quickly. You know, sometimes under a minute. If you found yourself to thrive in those settings where you had to think quick or when there was an abstract level of pattern and you, you know, you were the person who could tell what the pattern was before everyone else, that's UCAT again is probably the one for you because the abstract reasoning section is one that a lot of students struggle with for the UCAT. Again, if you really like your maths, the quantitative reasoning section also works good for you. But broadly though, when comparing the GAMSAT and the UCAT, I think of the GAMSAT as more of like a comprehensive prep that requires you to really go deep into yourself and introspect different reasoning skills that you might be struggling with, different essay ideas, different views of the world that you have. So that's really deep. The UCAT, the questions are actually not that hard. The level of knowledge and skill required is quite basic. About year 10 level, the key is to just do it quickly. So depending on which type of a person you are, just decides which test that you might find a little bit easier. Personally though, if I had to choose, I would say that the UCAT exam is easier to go for than the GAMSAT. The GAMSAT requires a much longer and much more of a comprehensive plan than the UCAT. Talking about plans, which one takes longer to prep for? As I just mentioned, the GAMSAT does take longer. I would say ideally people would spend around three to four months of study for the GAMSAT before doing really well. Whereas for the UCAT, I think you could get away with studying properly for two months. So it's about half the time, which is something to consider as well. That's mainly stemming from the fact that for the GAMSAT, that requires a lot of groundwork early on, getting your theory up to speed for physics, chemistry, biology, or learning the basics of writing an essay, the basics of comprehension, Whereas for the UCAT, a lot of these skills we were already taught in school, we're just learning to do it quicker. So to track progress requires a lot of data analysis on which type of questions you're getting wrong. And it's really hard to gauge if you're actually progressing because every time you do a set, it's a different type of questions and the questions have different sets of difficulty. Whereas for the UCAT, the difficulty stays the same. So the way you just track progress is just by checking how quick you're doing them. If you finish a set quicker than the one you did before, bam, you're improving, right? So it's much easier to track progress for the UCAT exam as well. Now the big question, which one should you sit to get into medical school? Now listen, it depends, right? If you're watching this and you're in school, year 11, year 12, well, you don't really have much of a choice. The only test you can sit while still in school in year 12 is the UCAT and I would definitely recommend you sit it. Don't just think I'm gonna sit the GAMSAT in the future. Sit the UCAT, see how you go. If it works out, just start medical school because there's no guarantee going forward. So big consideration comes in when you're a university student, whether it be a Bachelor of Science student, Bachelor of Biomedicine or any other bachelor degree, or even if you finish your bachelor degree and now considering getting into medical school, this is what I would recommend. I would recommend you sit both. Let's look at the timeline for this. The GAMSAT happens every year for the first time in March. So you're looking at around March 25th, let's say. And then the UCAT happens in July before the GAMSAT happens for a second time in September. So you've really got these two GAMSAT seats, the first one in March and the next one in September. And then you have the UCAT seat kind of in the middle. And that works out really well for you guys because you can study for the GAMSAT over the summer say December, January, February, then you sit the GAMSAT, see how you go, and then after you sat the GAMSAT, you can start preparing for the UCAT as well. Now, obviously that assumes that you have a decent amount of availability and you don't have a lot of commitments, but I think that's the best approach than preparing for one single test 
why would you do that if the tests are so spaced out that you could potentially sit both of these tests to maximize your chances of getting into medical school? I think the worst thing that you could do is prepare for both tests simultaneously. Because the tests are so different, I feel like you'll be putting your eggs in too many baskets. It's just going to be too spread out. Your time and effort won't lead to any fruitful outcome in either of those tests. So I think ideally prepare for the GAMSAT, wait for the UCAT and then start preparing for the UCAT two months before July. I hope you guys found this helpful. That was my comparison between the GAMSAT and the UCAT. For more updates, please subscribe to the channel. Leave a like if you want to see more videos like this. Follow me on Instagram for any updates that I have with the whole process into getting into medical school or if you're interested in seeing my journey through medical school as well. I hope you guys are finding this video is useful again and the messages that you guys send really keeps me motivated to keep posting. My exams are going to finish up on November and then I'll be posting much much more and I really look forward to it. I'll let you guys go and I'll see you guys in the next one.